Hey, well, it's August 2022. If you caught my last video, I was putting quite a few seedling mangoes in the ground in direct clay soil. In the event those don't work out or we get a very unusual frost and those get killed off, I want to have insurance backups. So I'm going to be basically container growing a lot of those same varieties and just sharing with you what I believe to be the best soil media to grow tropicals in. So we're gonna be using three components. So right in front, you can see a bag of peat moss. This is an organic mixture, but unlike a lot of organic components, this one is not gonna break down too fast. I haven't found a definitive answer on how many years it takes to break down peat moss. Most people just quote several years, which is real generic. So I'm not sure if that's three years you know, 10 years, who knows. But most people agree that this is one of the slowest organic components to decompose. And it's found in most of your potting mixes. So that will be 55% of my base. You can see a three cubic foot bag there. I got this at my local Lowe's. So you can find these at the big box stores. Fairly inexpensive, I believe under 20 bucks for this. Due to some moisture from rain recently, it has fluffed up the bag. Um, the benefit of peat moss is it does hold moisture. It can retain 20 times its dry volume. So it's gonna be a good one in our climate to hold some moisture. The problem with peat moss is when it dries out, it gets very light. To compensate for the weight and to give the mixture some structure, I'm gonna be putting in a 25% base of decomposed granite. So that's that bag right there. Again, you can find this at your big box stores, generally, at least if you're in the Arizona area. That half cubic foot bag is gonna be around five bucks. The last component is going to be this volcanic black rock. Actually just found this stuff. Uh, half a cubic foot bag, I found this at Home Depot, costs nine bucks. And this is gonna provide our aeration. Volcanic rock is porous, lightweight. That's gonna allow the oxygen, which is super important when you have potted plants. This volcanic rock is going to allow air gaps, basically aeration in that soil so that it can breathe. So make no claim that this is the best set of materials to use, but after doing a lot of research, uh, this seems to be the best for me. And it's also fairly economical and readily available. All right, given that we're approaching mid-August, you know, fall, I'm not gonna put these into a huge container knowing they're not gonna put on a whole lot of growth at this point before we hit cooler temps. So I'm gonna be uh, potting these up in two gallon containers, at least for now. And I'll use a wheelbarrow here to mix up the media, just to make things a little easier. I've got a one gallon bucket here just to help me a portion. Uh, it's not going to be an exact science, but essentially what I had mentioned before is I want about a 55% mixture of the peat moss. Looking at this component, you can see it definitely is very light and fluffy. It's still organic material, so you're going to see some decomposition over time, but very slowly. And it holds on to nutrients, so this is going to be beneficial when we top dress our container with compost and mulch, um, any kind of soil amendments. Uh, this material will hold that in. So just adding approximately two one gallon buckets of this. Next on the list is the decomposed granite. Um, very, very heavy, dense material. Digging into this, you can see that it's quite coarse. The surface area is more rough on this and you can also see that there's some aggregate in here. There's some rocks in here. So it's definitely more of a gritty type mix. From my research, typically people recommend more of a gritty mix if you need a lot of drainage as well. So this mixture is gonna provide some drainage, but conversely, it's also going to add weight to the mixture. It's gonna give some body to our soil, so it's not gonna just fly away. So we're gonna add that in. Next up is our volcanic rock. This is approximating 20% of our mixture. Uh, this is something I just came across today. So I spent quite a bit of money uh, actually 
buying pumice online. Uh, it was really expensive to ship. And I have to say that this pavestone product, this black volcanic rock, really approximates pumice. It's not the same thing, but very close as far as having that great porosity and also being really lightweight. And you can see that in this mixture, uh, unlike the red lava rock that I bought, it's really broken down pretty fine. There is quite a bit of variability, but this is great stuff. It's really light. So very different than the lava rock that I bought. Um, and if you are gonna mend your soil, whether it's the clay or your container plants, uh, this is the stuff I would go with. And also being at, you know, nine bucks for half a cubic foot, pretty inexpensive. So this is what's gonna allow oxygen exchange. Here's our mixture. So unlike uh, the cactus mix that I've used in the past for both in-ground and container growing, what I've changed out primarily is instead of using perlite and mulch vines, I'm using this volcanic rock and using the decomposed granite. This should long-term help with the aeration of the plant. I've got my container pretty much filled up. We're gonna go ahead and seed the plant on here. Just fill in the soil around the plant. Uh, my seedlings all potted up at this point. Uh, I've got a few more on the way that are a little bit older. You know, these are just a few months old. The ones I've got coming are about a year old. So a little bit more growth on them. This is the CAC. We've got a Florigon here. A Philippine here. A honey Mango. And then here we have the Orange Sherbert. So you can see in all of these pots, I do have a little bit of space remaining, and that's on purpose. I didn't fill these all the way up to the top. Um, they're just at grade up to the seed level, and then I'll be putting some compost right on top of this media, and then covering that with some wood mulch to help insulate this from both cold and heat. In a week, um, two at most, I'll go ahead and put down a slow-release Osmocote, something that will not overwhelm these mangoes. A young mango doesn't want too much nitrogen that can burn it up. So I've heard that a slow release is the best way to go on a young mango. It'll give it, you know, small increments of food, not overwhelm it. The compost will eventually work its way into the plant to give it food, but that's not going to be a return right away. That takes some time for it to, you know, basically break down where it can be um, consumable by, by the plant. So last step, I'm just gonna go ahead and hydrate these mangoes. Get some water on them. Uh, this should drain very well. Let's water these in well. And we can see just in seconds, you know, this mixture is draining from the bottom. So this is a good thing. You know, other 9B growers in Southern California have access to that uh, top pot mix that I've heard lots of good things about. But here, just trying to emulate that mixture as best I can with the materials that are accessible to me, you know, locally at our big box stores. So hopefully for those of you that also grow in this area, you found this useful and you can make your own mix and a lot cheaper you know, than if you were to buy a commercial potting mix. And by far, I think this is a much better solution. Thanks for watching and happy gardening.